A pair of Ice Age wolf pups were found with stomachs full of woolly rhino meat. A jawbone in Texas turns out to be a brand new species of ancient marsupial that might have climbed trees like a primate. And on a remote Canary Island, a giant lizard fossil may belong to a reptile even bigger than any we've ever seen there before. These are DNA tests on ancient bones that revealed species we never knew existed. Back in 2011 and 2015, two little Ice Age puppies were found frozen in the permafrost near Tumat, Siberia. These things were so well preserved, it's insane. I mean, looking at these images, you can see fur and skin. They look like freshly made animal pelts. But what you can't see in these images is that even their insides were still intact. At first, they thought these were early domesticated dogs. They were found near mammoth bones that had been butchered and burned, so it seemed possible they'd been hanging around humans and were fed scraps. Their stomachs also still had bits of woolly rhino meat and small bird feathers. And while that sounds like something humans might have given them, there's no evidence they were fed by people directly. More likely, they just picked at leftovers. Scientists found that these pups were actually two-month-old wolf cubs, sisters, and part of an extinct wolf lineage that has no connection to modern dogs. So these things just split off at some point. There were no injuries on them either, so researchers think their den might have just collapsed and buried them alive. So here's a case of fossils sitting around for decades before anyone realized how special they really were. A few bits of jaw and teeth were dug up in Big Bend National Park in Texas, just sat in a collection for years, but news of this just came out on June 24th. A PhD student named Kristen Miller at the University of Kansas took a closer look and figured out they actually belonged to a brand new species of ancient mammal called Swandalis solastella. Probably butchering that, but the find is so recent, I haven't been able to find a proper pronunciation yet. But the animal lived about 60 million years ago, not long after the dinosaurs died out. It's an early relative of today's marsupials, like opossums and kangaroos. Even though it was only about the size of a hedgehog, it's the largest known member of its group from that time and region. Miller compared the fossils with tons of others from the same period and found it didn't match any of them. And what's really interesting is that based on its size and build, it might have acted more like an early primate, climbing, foraging, moving through trees. This is a small little creature, but it's helping scientists learn about which animals took over different roles right after the dinosaurs disappeared. In 2022, on the island of Tenerife, a retired botanist named Arnaldo Santos Guerrera was out looking for snail shells and instead came across something way cooler, at least to most people, a fully intact fossil of a massive lizard. And not only that, it was ancient. The fossil was preserved inside a sandstone block and dates back around 700,000 years. It looks to be from a species called Galotia goliath, a giant lizard that used to roam the Canary Islands before humans ever arrived. The skeleton was still in its life position, meaning it wasn't scattered and broken, so that usually means it got buried really quickly. In the same block, there was also a second second lizard fossil. That one wasn't in as great shape though. Scientists think the two may have died around the same time. After the find, Santos Guerrero got in touch with a paleontologist at the local university, and now researchers are digitally scanning the skeleton to figure out exactly what species it is. The Galatia goliath is known as the biggest reptile ever found on the Canary Islands, growing up to about four feet long. But there's a chance this particular one could have been even bigger. The university has old fossils from nearby islands, uh, but none of them are as complete or as ancient as this one. But now they're comparing this new specimen with everything they've got to see if it's the same species or, even more exciting, something totally new. In 2002, deep in a cave in Romania, researchers found a human jawbone that turned out to be way more important than they realized at the time. When they eventually ran DNA tests on it, they discovered it belonged to a person who lived about 40,000 years ago. And about six to nine percent of that person's DNA came from Neanderthals. That's a lot. Way more than you'd see in modern humans today. That means this person had a Neanderthal relative just a few generations before, probably a grandparent or great-grandparent. This makes it one of the most recent examples we've ever found of direct interbreeding between modern humans and Neanderthals. 
The skull, now known as Always One, has a mix of traits, some humans, some Neanderthal, which lines up, of course, with the DNA results. What's interesting is that while modern non-African humans carry small traces of Neanderthal DNA, this person was walking around while the two species were still overlapping and hooking up, as the scientists would say. No tools or artifacts were found with the bones, so we don't know much about how Always One lived, but the DNA alone has made this one one of the most important recent fossil finds in Europe. On Great Abaco Island in the Bahamas, scientists pulled a nearly complete bird skeleton out of the deep underwater sinkhole called Sawmill Sink. The bird, called Creighton's Caracara, went extinct around a thousand years ago, not long after humans arrived in the area. Now, bird bones usually don't hold DNA very well. They're fragile and hollow, so they fall apart pretty fast, especially in warmer places. But this one had been sitting in cold, dark, oxygen-free water nearly a hundred feet deep, which basically turned it into a freezer. When researchers tested a femur from the skeleton, they expected to get a few scraps of DNA at most. Instead, they got 98.87% of the bird's entire mitochondrial genome. That's the part of DNA passed down from a mother to the offspring and helps power cells. This is almost unheard of for something this old, about 2,500 years. Genetic testing showed that this extinct bird was closely related to the two living Caracara species, the crested Caracara and the southern Caracara. All three probably shared a common ancestor about a million years ago. Nesophontus, which translates to something like island killer. Actually, the second word starts with M, but we're not allowed to say it on YouTube. Anyway, the island killer was a strange, shrew-like mammal that used to live on the Caribbean islands. It was tiny, insect-eating, and probably lived under leaf litter or in burrows. It went extinct sometime after European colonizers showed up, probably because rats came along on the boats and wiped them out. For a long time, nobody knew exactly exactly where Nesophontes fits on the mammal family tree. But back in 2016, a team of researchers managed to extract ancient DNA from a 750-year-old bone they found in an old owl pellet. They found that the creature was closely related to Selenodons, another rare insect-eating mammal that still lives on a few Caribbean islands today. They probably split off from a common ancestor over 70 million years ago, when the Caribbean looked totally different, just volcanic islands back then. In Belgium, scientists took another look at some fossilized bird bones that were actually dug up in the 90s, but were misidentified and shelved. In 2022, researchers took a second look at the fossils, which everyone just thought were from a regular water bird. Once the team ran CT scans and a fresh analysis of the skull, they realized it was something completely new. Janivus finalidens, a 66 million year old bird that still had teeth. That alone was surprising. Modern birds do not have teeth. It was thought that line had ended around the time the dinosaurs did, but the fossil pushed that timeline right up to the mass extinction boundary. Janivus was about the size of a vulture and could fly, which made it very different from the small grounded tooth birds scientists had found before. Real surprise was its jaw. It had a flexible upper part that could move around, kind of like what modern birds use to handle their food, and no one thought that showed up until much later. So now it looks like that trait may have existed before birds lost their teeth. Basically, this creature sits right in the middle of the transition between ancient tooth birds and the modern ones flying around today, and that's pretty cool. Before 2010, no one had heard of Denisovans, but then scientists tested DNA from a single finger bone found in Denisova Cave in Siberia, and it completely changed what we thought we knew about early humans. The bone belonged to a young girl who lived tens of thousands of years ago, and the DNA didn't match us or Neanderthals. It was something entirely different, a third kind of human. The Denisovans lived across huge parts of Asia for thousands of years and even bred with Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. If you're Malaysian or Aboriginal Australian, there's a good chance you've got a small percentage of Denisovan DNA in you today. They were around from at least 285,000 to about 25,000 years ago, and the cave where they were first discovered also held Neanderthal remains, so these species 
we're definitely crossing paths. Also in Denisova Cave, the same place where the Denisovans were first found, scientists also discovered a bone fragment that turned out to be something totally unexpected. DNA tests showed it belonged to a teenage girl who lived about 90,000 years ago. But here is the crazy part. Her mother was a Neanderthal and her father was Denisovan. She was a first generation hybrid, not just a mix of a few generations like down the line. Her parents were from two completely different human species. How crazy would that be to have two parents who are a different species? Ah, crazy. Researchers nicknamed her Denny. Also interesting, her father, the Denisovan, also had some Neanderthal ancestry way back in his family tree. So this mixing had happened more than once and it had been going on for a while. What makes this find so important is that it's not just a theory. It's not just based on DNA percentages like in other cases. This is direct evidence of two different human species producing a child together. It's one of the only times we've ever found something like this. And again, all of it came from a tiny bone fragment that had been sitting in a cave for tens of thousands of years. In 2015, archaeologists digging in a cave on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi found the skeleton of a teenage girl buried with stone tools and a few shells. At first glance, it looked like a regular burial, but DNA testing showed something way more interesting going on here. The girl, who lived about 7,200 years ago, was part of a mysterious group known as the Toa Leans. Her DNA didn't match any known modern human populations. She had genetic links to indigenous Australians and Papuans, but also carried a chunk of ancient DNA from a now extinct group related to the Denisovans, one we've never seen before. So basically she belonged to a branch of early humans that split off and then stayed isolated in Southeast Asia for thousands of years. Her bones are the first ancient human DNA ever pulled from that part of the world totally lucky find. She fills in a big missing piece about how early humans spread through Asia. And even though the Denisovans were supposed to be long gone by then, her DNA proves they stuck around a lot longer than they thought. With all that said, I've been your host James and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.